alaikum, uh, Dr. Omar, and assalamu alaikum to everyone that would be viewing this, inshallah. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to look at um, uh, maybe a few case studies, a uh, few people I've counseled in my past and the type of things that they go through. Um, one thing, uh, you know, uh, when I was, one of the things I've seen is that a lot of brothers come to me that are married and there is a lot of uh, issues with ED, a lot of issues with watching porn in the Muslim world, uh, and, uh, and in fact, make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. It's gone to the point where I had one brother tell me that you know how they have uh, adult cartoons now, like the Emmys? Yes, and, yes. And he's like, I feel more attracted to girls that are in the cartoons than the girls in real life. Uh. And uh, I have uh, even had uh, somebody tell me that when it comes to uh, and, and I know this, inshallah, we'll talk about this whole subject of homosexuality in another time, but I'm just saying as an example, mm -hmm. one brother is like, I find the cartoon girls that they draw uh, more attractive than the, men's I'm, the men I'm attracted to in real life. So there's like all this like weird things and people yes. recognize weird, but let's start with this one case. There's a brother. He... Uh, has a wife, but mm -hmm. for some reason he'd rather spend time on porn. And there's another brother I, I knew that I used to counsel. He used to actually go when he was feeling, every time he's feeling negative, he would go and uh, go to these, in the U.S. they have these massage parlors. But these yeah, massage yeah. parlors only don't do massage. You meet the girl, you start talking to her, and then she'll offer more services than just massaging you. And so he'd go to these massage par parlors and, you know, uh, get himself taken care of through that mm -hmm. problem instead of his wife that's at home. <clears throat> so it's, you know, it's the, the problem with those problems is that they're not like simple problems. They're like compounded. And it's hard to tell how much is the wife's doing, how much is his doing, and, and, and everything is just messed up. Mm. Well... You want me to pick it up from here? Yeah, pornography. Oh, pornography. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, it's not exactly marriage, but it does affect marriage, and marriage can affect pornography or one's addiction to it. Um, if, where to begin? It, it, this is such an old problem. Um, oh, my gosh. It's hard to know where to start with this one. The thing um, is access. So I mean, the problem has been there, I guess, for a long time. But the access there is immediate. Well, and, the a lot access, of wives, and a lot of wives yeah. just co uh, coess and say, OK, well, this is what he does. Yeah. You know, like I, I remember well, talking to a sister and she's like, yeah, he has Playboy magazines under his mattress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, my wife would kill me, <laughs> but mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Um, well, this is a, this is a um, an aspect of the. You remember I used the term Jewification, right? It's an as, it's an aspect of the Jewified world. Now, let's talk about it from that perspective before we just go and bash the men, okay? Okay. Because uh, there is a war that's taking place. And um, I, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, this aspect of sexuality hasn't been there. It's always been there. But the morals uh, and the public mores that kept it at bay have been relaxed since the Enlightenment uh, in a much broader sense. Now, Yes, during the Roman times, uh, for example, we go back 2,000 years ago or during the days of the ancient mysteries, 
there were very lax approaches to human sexuality that were quite common, but they were also um, kept in some form of order because of um, uh, established laws and also the religious practices. For example, if a man uh, wanted to have um, uh, sex with someone else other than his um, wife, he would go to the temple <laughs> in the old Akkadian Empire. Okay, They had temple prostitutes. This was nothing that was considered abnormal. This was considered normal at the time. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there were certain cultures where every woman was expected to give herself in the temple to a stranger, mm -hmm. okay, as an act of sacrifice <laughs> to the, you know, whatever god they were worshipping. Um, and I mean, this was incumbent upon every, every woman in, in certain realms. So this perversion of sexuality has been around for an awful long time, and it's been expressed in different ways. For example, mm -hmm. the Christian festival of Christmas is called, uh, was called Saturnalia in mm -hmm. ancient Rome. And this <coughs> goes back to, uh, the the uh, this actually can be traced to uh, Turkey and uh, uh, Anatolia at the time to the realm of uh, Pergamum and under the mother goddess and there was a time for about uh, uh, two weeks uh, during uh, the the annual Christmas festival December twenty fifth uh, this uh, winter solstice where the the everything was turned upside down okay. So uh, the the pauper became king, the king became pauper, uh, oh. uh, uh, women became open prostitutes, they gave themselves to every man in the street. This sort of thing went on. Crimes were practiced, murder was practiced, and there was no justice administered during this time. And mm. the whole kingdom went crazy for a, a period of about uh, two weeks. There and was a movie every, out called The Purge that was about like yes. this time period where you could do any crime kind yes. of thing. Yes, this and uh, you can you can trace this back to some uh, so, some some of these practices were were common in ancient Tibet and some places in India uh, where all restrictions were thrown away. Mm. And uh, now you have this uh, expressed as a form of um, uh, uh, the the Jewish Kabbalah, it's not common knowledge, but it, it is there, and uh, it is common practice now, but people just don't understand where it comes from. This whole thing going back to uh, the Sabbateans in the 17th century, the false messiah named Sabbatai and Zivi, uh, and uh, those people who followed him, they, they were called the Frankist, I, I mentioned them before, they mm -hmm. formed this triumvirate, it has now become known as the Illuminati, they joined with the Jesuit intellectuals, the European intellectuals, the uh, Baal Shem, or the, the, uh, the, the major guy from the Jews uh, in Eastern Europe, and then they joined with the, uh, the, the Jewish financiers, the bankers who made themselves very rich from the East uh, Indies companies, the Dutch and the British. And these 200 families uh, who invested themselves in those companies became extremely wealthy. Uh, that's mm. where they got their money. They got their money from raping the Far East, okay, and mm. raping India. And everybody who studies history, especially the Indians, they know this and they just accepted it now. Well, it's just history and that's just the way it is. No, these people are still in power and they did. They deserve to be murdered, okay? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's it because they're ruining the world. And one of the ways in which they're ruining the world is through the what we call the protocols of zion this has mm -hmm. been in practice now and part of those protocols is the ruination of sexual mores mm -hmm. so this uh, ruination comes from the old mystery religions okay and it was a form of religious worship 
Okay, these fertility cults were common. This, uh, mm. I mean, in G in Egypt, for example, uh, they would have a, a, and they still do this in Japan. They would have an annual phallus parade, and women, the youngest and most beautiful women in the country, would march through the street, you know, carrying their phalluses. Mm. They would carry a, you know, a, a twenty-inch dildo or something like that, and some of them had a giant, a giant phallus. Okay, in Japan, if you go there, you can see a thirty-foot phallus being carried on the shoulder of maidens. Okay, mm. they have phallus, uh, ice, uh, 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 popsicles, um, the balloons, all of this sort of thing is celebrated, and this is part of the f- fertility cult religion. Okay, mm. now. I'm not saying that this is, uh, this, this is pornographic, in a sense it is, but 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, this was common. This was religion, mm. okay? It was religious practice. Now, the Jews, you have to understand, had been under a very restrictive set of moral practices. Uh, for at least uh, 1,500 years since the fall of the temple and since the day of Isa, they, and, and, and before, of course, but they had not relaxed their morals in all this time until the onset of this false messiah, Sabbatai Zevi. Mm. And he turned everything upside down with the particular interpretation of the Kabbalah. And this goes back to again, the mystery religions, but in a metaphysical sense that is uh, attributed to some aspects of Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. Now, this is called the the essence of the black sun. The the black sun is the darkness that's over the surface of the deep in uh, Genesis. It's it's this uh, dark shadow that's covering the deep things of God, so to speak. But they pervert it. And they pervert it by saying that, well, you know, God made a mistake. Mm. This is how they think. This is how some of these these Jewish rabbis think. And they go through the uh, emendations of uh, God in creating the universe. And they try to imagine how he did it. Okay. Which is just a stupid thing to do. But these people don't have anything other to do with their lives. And so they try to imagine how God does things. Okay, then they come up with all these what I called before these vain imaginations. These vain imaginations are talked about in the Bible profusely all throughout the Bible. They're talked about Old Testament, New Testament. They are mentioned vain imaginations. Men are given over to vain imaginations when they abandoned the kingdom. (laughs) As we've spoken before. And so they imagine that God had. uh, 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 you know, emendated into the world through what we call as Muslims kun faya kun, but they give this kun faya kun a persona, okay, and this has become the son of God in a certain sense, and they in various aspects they give it a, they give him a name, they call him Adam Kadman, they call him all sorts of things, and they say that Adam Kadman was a bisexual. Okay, the that uh, well, I'm talking about Adam. Adam. <laughs> okay, they say he was bisexual before Eve came out. Okay, which is another vain imagination. Okay, they have no foundation for this. It's an imagination. It's a what they call a speculative imagination. That's what they call Freemasonry. Speculative Freemasons. They imagine these things mm-hmm. and they talk about them. And before you know it, after two or three generations, it is their reality. They're living it, mm-hmm. okay, as mm-hmm. if these things are true and proven, okay? There's no science involved at all other than this vain imaginative, imaginative uh, metaphysics, okay? This is all attributed to Gnosticism. Now, our, our good Islamic philosophers in the past, people like uh, Al-Ghazali and others have destroyed this, this basis, mm-hmm. but the Jews still uh, uh, find it uh, valid. Oh, they I see, them. I see. Yeah. Okay, so, and these are the Jews who govern the Jews. These are not the Jews on the street. The Jews on the street don't 
don't think about these things too much. They just go to synagogue, they get their bar mitzvahs, and they go on with their life trying to rape and pillage whatever they can from the rest of the goyim. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is this is normal for them because we're all cattle to them. It doesn't right. matter which you, you talk to unless they've become a Muslim, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, there are some decent humanist Jews out there like... Uh, uh, Spinoza and whatnot, they've, they've left the flock, but they're still crazy, okay, mm. with this mentality, because the Jewish mentality is really bloody crazy when you imagine it. And Gershom Shloam, one of their finest intellectuals, admits this. You read his writings, he says, yeah, they're all nuts. <laughs> all, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, and you know, so anyway, let's get back to this uh, this perversion of sexuality. We'll go back to the black sun. So we call this the they call it the black sun. Now the black sun was a symbol for the Nazi SS. Okay, mm-hmm. it was their symbol. Himmler used it as his um, sigil. Okay, mm-hmm. when he created this castle in World <coughs> Earth. Well, I can't mm-hmm. say it correctly, but. He had this occult castle that he, he built, okay, mm. dedicated it to, to to the blood to the dark side, and the black sun was in the center of their round table room, okay, where all the knights would assemble, and they would do their they would do their black knight dicker there and cast mm. their spells and whatever. Th- this black sun represents. The element of divinity that they say Allah left behind when he created the material realm. Okay. Mm. So, in other words, Allah created materialism. He left part of himself in the material. And it's up to the Jewish magician to retrieve that spark of divinity and restore it. Mm. And, and by restoring that, consciously, he becomes the ubermensch, okay, mm. the superman, okay? This is basically, in a nutshell, what they're trying to do. Now, in doing this, there is a philo- philosophical approach that says, well, if you're going to have to immerse yourself in the material world in order to retrieve this divine spark, this element of the black sun, you see, you have to immerse yourself in sin. Mm. You see? So you have to become the best sinner in order to become the best of the pious. This mm. is there. Okay. And But it goes further than that because if you want to become the best magician, somebody like Rasputin, you see, you have to do this. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. So yeah. in, To immerse themselves into sin means also to immerse themselves and the world in sin. Because Mm. this is redemption of the world we're talking about. This is what they call their tikkum ulum Mm. uh, in in the Hebrew. They're trying to redeem the world. Now, not every Jew on the street, 90% of your Jews on the street don't understand this. But there's an element of them who follow the Kabbalah seriously and they do understand it Mm -hmm. and they put it into practice (laughs) and so they immerse themselves and they immerse the world into sin Mm -hmm. and the greatest of sins that you can uh, uh, can can commit has to do with the uh, the realm of sexual perversion and morality Mm -hmm. immorality okay now that's next to idolatry but this whole thing is a form of idolatry because they're idolizing their own vain imagination. So this is worship of the human. So in in essence, it's humanism, but with a metaphysical twist because, you know, they want to become magicians too. So they think that this has something to do with uh, uh, King Suleiman's uh, control over the jinn and all sort of thing. So the more they immerse themselves in sin, the more they do the forbidden, the closer they become to God, okay? Mm -hmm. You you figure this out. This is <laughs> mad. I told you they were mad. They're mad people, and they're in charge of the world. Okay. Now, they are projecting this madness onto the entire public, and pornography is part of that projection. 
Okay. It's mm -hmm. not just a money maker. Yes, it is a money maker. Of course it is. But it is a um, way of controlling the masses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because once you ruin a man's or a woman's sense of uh, dignity, and dig this dignity has everything to do with the moral uh, bearing, okay, the and the preservation of modesty and the preservation of sexual integrity, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and all of this has to do with trust, okay. Now, I wrote some papers on trust. And everyone who has a mind uh, should read them, okay? And they're 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 posted on my my website. You can get access to. Okay. To, yeah, uh, I'll put a link there for the, these, for the um, website. For the paper. These papers are very important because mm -hmm. trust has everything to do with the maintenance of the complementarity in the marriage, okay? okay. So. What happens when you have a wife whose husband has been given up to this pornography, giving himself over to it? She just throws up her hands, okay? And she says, well, I, I can't really do anything about this. Now, some women will struggle with it. The, other, the one you just mentioned, she said, uh, that's how my husband is. What can I do? <laughs> and yeah. this, is, this, is a, uh, this is a realistic attitude, you know? She can't do anything about it. Because he's given over to this thing, okay? Mm -hmm. No, and but the the essence of their marriage is already destroyed. So what they have is they have a shell, okay? They have a shell, and, and this shell public appearance. There's some merit in in it, the, the fact that they they remain together, this sort of thing. But the essence of what makes for nobility, what makes for chivalry, what makes for dignity, what makes for iman, real mm -hmm. faith, okay, is gone. It's empty. It's a void. Mm -hmm. It's vain because the whole thing is a vain imagination. You see, and she just throws her hand up and she says, oh, well, this is my this is my lot in life. May Allah have mercy on me. And she may be thinking, I, I'm not sure if I want him to have mercy on my this, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so yeah. now let's talk about this from another aspect. The man, uh, sexuality and the, the orgasm, this sort of thing gives us, okay, this pleasure is addictive. It's physically addictive. It creates uh, in the mind certain chemical processes, and these are addictive, okay? They're just like a drug, hmm. all right? They are a drug, but it's a self-made drug. The drug is in the brain. Now, this these processes are supposed to be associated with sexual pleasure, with sexual uh, uh, reaching of orgasm and with trust, okay? They, uh, and this trust comes with intimacy. These are the things that, 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 that bind us to our partners, okay? Mm. Now, if, if you don't have that, what binds you to your partner is nothing more than just a, a sort of legal facade, okay? Uh, but if you have those, uh, then you are in the realm where we talked about uh, last time, where the prophets walked with their wives, okay? Yeah. This is where uh, Muhammad and Khadijah, blessings upon them, this is where they walked together, okay? And this is how they incarnated the kingdom of Allah in that nascent time that we call uh, the, 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 the birth of Islam, uh, Peace and blessings will be upon all those who took part in that effort. I'm jealous of them, okay? I'm jealous of people who were able to go to the masjid and leave their shops open. Okay. I'm jealous of that. And uh, uh, so anyway, uh, that's what it takes to get to that point. If you don't have this, it can't happen, see? 
this Chiasia Dunia, am I saying it correctly? This spirit, this esprit de corps, depends upon marriage. It mm. depends upon the dean in marriage. And when you have all of this duification going on, it's, it's impossible. So the man who's addicted to the pornography, addictions can be broken, okay? But this requires discipline and it requires counsel, mm. okay? Uh, it requires patience. It requires, first of all, acknowledging it for what it is, okay? The man is sitting there producing his own morphine, okay, in his mm -hmm. brain through this process of masturbation, watching the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, nakedness of other women, this sort of thing. All of that is a perversion of what is natural. He should be watching his own wife's nakedness. Now, let's talk about another aspect here. Some men are married to ugly women, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, they have a problem. OK, mm. and this problem cannot be fixed uh, easily. One of the reasons it can't be fixed easily is because the wealthy are stealing too much money. Mm. OK, and they're keeping uh, all of the best women, the most attractive women for themselves. OK, mm. they're also farming them out into pornography. They're making turning them out into whores. OK. Mm. This is what they do. It's a big industry. It's a big business. And there would be no, no business if there was no customers. Okay. And there would be no customers if women uh, were to do their job in the bed at home. Hmm. Many of them. Okay. But you also had this problem of unattractive uh, wives. We touched, we touched on this before. Right. Yeah. We talked uh, about face versus the, the, uh, shape. The, they, they, they disqualified themselves as a sexual partner. The, men's no, the man loves them, but he's no longer sexually attracted to them. Because, you know, they gained pregnancy, and now they've lost all the charm that they want. You know, I told you before, 10, 15 kilograms at the most, at the most, usually about 10 kilograms, 10, 12 kilograms is enough. OK, and half of that's going to be the baby and the placenta is gone at birth. So the rest of it, you just work it off. OK, so when a woman does that, she feels, well, I've done my job. I brought the babies into the world and da, da, da. the man is uh, saying to himself, oh, gosh, now I'm stuck with the kids screaming and an ugly wife <laughs> whom I love. OK. Yeah. But this does not satisfy the 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 needs of my uh, my sexual needs. He, he's mm -hmm. he's got to they've got to be expressed somehow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is a matter that, um, well, how do you say about it in, in, in Islamic terms, in legal terms? What the the, the least? I, I'm I'm not a lawyer here. Please, I, I'm going to probably step over the lines here, but. The least evil <laughs> is probably going to be acceptable under certain circumstances. Okay. Mm. Now, if the if the man was being paid well, and if his wife wasn't spending too much money, and if the Jews weren't taking too much money in uh, all their various enterprises, and uh, everyone else was being reasonable with the economics of the matter. The man would be ordinarily be able to take another wife who would be more pleasing to him in this realm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that does that's not always the case. And so this this need for the man, I'm not saying it's greater than the woman. The woman also has this need for the sexual satisfaction uh, and it, it equates at a moment. But a man, a man has a greater drive. OK, for this, this imminent the satisfaction. The fact of the matter is, ladies, now listen to me carefully. OK, if this sexual gratification is not satisfied, if you don't need, he will be distracted until they are satisfied. He will not be able to concentrate on his work. 
Mm. This is not a matter of mental discipline. This is a matter of physiological need. Allah mm. has wired us this way. This is why the Prophet said, if you see a woman that gets you excited on the way home, you, go, uh, you immediately go home and have relations with your wife. Mm. Okay? Yeah? Have done with it because it can't be managed any other way. Mm. Okay? So yeah. when it can't be managed any other way, the man has to man he has to masturbate. Okay. Yeah. Now nobody wants to talk about this, but it is a reality. Mm -hmm. If you study the literature, and I, I have reviewed the literature in the not recently, but in the past, more than eighty percent of the world masturbates, and that includes women. Okay, but nobody talks about it, or very few talk about it. Or the only people who talk about it will be the people who have perverted sexuality. They'll mm -hmm. talk about it freely and openly. Right. They'll make a show of it. They'll make a dis great display of it. And you see that on the pornography as well. Okay, so it's all there. So this this whole is a realm of confusion, and it's a realm that needs to be. Honestly, but where does that education begin? Well, it begins in the cradle, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, my goodness me. Dr. Omar, where are you going? <laughs> Let's go to that baby. Gucci, Gucci, goo. Oh, you sweet little thing. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And what are you doing to this baby? You're touching them. You're fondling them. You're teaching them to trust you. It mm. all has to do with trust and intimacy, it starts in the cradle, okay? And then what happens? When the child reaches the age of latency, or even before, some of the people, say, some of the mothers or fathers see them touching themselves, this is normal. Mm. This is natural, this is fitra, okay? Mm. And they say, oh, don't do that. <laughs> and they get this whole, uh, you know, perverted idea that sex is dirty, okay? That sex is evil, that it can't be. Then nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it, not in a proper, open manner. Mm -hmm. So the whole approach to sexual, a sexual education has to begin from childhood. Now, I'm not talking about public school. No, 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 don't. Don't say Dr. Omar said that. No. It's a gradual process. And then the child finally, you know, children ask questions and they want to know there's going to come a day when, you know, the, the, the child asks, Mama, are you OK? I heard you making noise last night. Did daddy hurt you? <laughs> yeah. You know, they want to know what is this? What is this thing? And so you slowly introduce them all right, to the truth of the matter. You don't pretend it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's, that's what we have what... done as Muslims. And so in this realm, we have the corrupted people telling our children yes. what to think. Exactly. And we've stayed silent because, you know, it's <laughs> yes. taboo. Yes, yes. The education needs to be done, by okay? And if the parent's too shy to do it, you give it to an uncle or an aunt, okay? And let them do it. OK, and it needs to be done before puberty, years before puberty. OK, you take an eight year old child, a nine year old child, and they want to know something about, you know, what happens. And they, they see chickens doing it. They see the cow doing it. They want to know. That's when to tell them and they'll say, what? Daddy does that. Oh, <laughs> and that. But they know. You see, at least they know and they can carry that on and over into their developing maturity. Mm -hmm. When they don't know and then you're finally throwing them into the marriage bed. OK. And they've got all these fear and anxiety and ignorance about the, the, the matter. OK. And sending them to the, the sex education at the madrasa doesn't mean. OK, I because these people are not talking about it. Mm -hmm. Frankly, they're not talking about it with knowledge because most of them don't know themselves and they don't know personally. OK, mm -hmm. they don't know from 
from they haven't really fulfilled themselves sexually. That's why they're still buggering the boys. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Yeah, it's a big problem in the Madonna system. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's why I've lost I've lost respect for almost the ninety percent of the Ummah over this matter alone. Because everybody knows what's going on and every man who goes to Juma doesn't do a damn thing about it. Sorry, this makes me angry. All right. <laughs> then funny. they go to they they go and listen to the Juma lecture from the man who's buggering their children. Hmm. That man needs to be killed. Yeah, I'm it sorry. happens all the time in the Muslim world. I'm sorry, this really gets me upset. You know, this kind of hypocrisy. And they they expect God to answer their prayer. What blood fools you Muslims have become. This mm -hmm. whole area needs to be addressed and it needs to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. It needs, and you start with Honor, you start with the truth because Allah lives in the truth. He mm. is the truth. <sighs> oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got carried away. This makes no. me very angry. Perfect. And it's a righteous anger. Okay. Yeah. I am very righteously angry mm -hmm. right now at this moment. So, uh, yeah, we're touching on very sensitive issues here. We're touching on issues which are at the core of justice. They are at the core of Iman. They are at the core of the Deen. Mm. Okay. And if this is not addressed properly, you know, just forget about it. Go on. Continue to pray. Continue to count your zikr, your dikr. Just continue to count all your zakat. It's worthless. Mm. worthless until you address this issue because the whole thing began with marriage and sexuality mm. it's fitra it is ordained by Allah it is the sunnah mm. okay is that clear yes very very clear so I'd like to touch this, on the topic of uh uh, two two things. Number one, what does this person do mm. to get out of pornography? And uh, mm -hmm. from little of what I have read on the subject, you know, so there's mm -hmm. watching pornography, but then it comes to a point where it becomes like chronic. Yes. Disorder, right. And then, yes. yeah. 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 That's well, this... but the other question I have is, uh, can is there a link between sexuality and spirituality? Yes. Yes. Um, <coughs> you know, the, the Sufis have, um, the pseudo Sufis have, uh, dis dis have uh, distorted this. Uh, Al Arabi, uh, rather uh, well, he's the one who defined it in terms that you have to read between the metaphysical lines of his poetry in order to get there. But um, you see, you have two groups of Sufis. There's the Sufis who's like the uh, the old Hindu, and most of them are. They want to sit there and uh, get into some ecstatic state. <laughs> and they they like to call this fana, and uh, the jinn like to play with this one, okay? Yeah, yeah. And they will play with it, and they will give it to them. But real fana comes from sexual intercourse. Mm. The real fana comes from mutual orgasm. OK, mm -hmm. and let me explain that. And you husbands and you wives listen very carefully because nobody teaches you these things. Yes. OK, the moment of orgasm when it's mutual is a complete and total abandonment of the self in the arms of the other. Mm. All right. Let me say that again. It's a complete and total abandonment of the self into the arms of the other. Now, when you do this together and you are in this moment, this is a moment when the heavens open above you, okay? Because your consciousness is gone, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just gone. You're, you're out of it. You know, this is greater than a drug. 
okay. This the the drug means mimes this, but it doesn't create it doesn't create it in the right sense. So that when you're both there, exhausted and literally out of your mind, out of your body, lifted up as it were into the next world, you're a so, sort of consciously aware of a dream like a state. Okay, mm -hmm. this is when the angels can administer certain graces by the will of Allah. Mm. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. And this, this completes the complementarity. Mm. It cements, okay? And not only does it cement it with you, it cements the relationship with Allah, okay? As a unit, not as individuals, as a unit, Together, so you come down out of the you you open yourselves to the heavens. The heavens then descend upon you in that moment, and you are all united together. You see, this is an element of of a conscious experience, which is both conscious and unconscious at the same time. Mm -hmm. And Rumi talked about this. Uh, and he always mentioned it in, in terms of what he called the beloved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about the beloved here because in that moment of orgasm, the divine is with you. Whatever this element is of God himself, it is somehow joined to us. That spirituality is joined to us in that moment. Mm -hmm. Now, the people who practice tantric sex, mm. they pervert this and they join themselves with the jinn. Right. The black magicians pervert this. They have their black magic ceremonies and they join themselves with the jinn. This is a perfect time to become jinn infested. And if mm. you want to, you know, talk about levels of jinn, the greater the perversion, the greater the ritual, the higher the jinn, the more powerful the jinn you, you get. Mm. And to the point where you, you the person that you're have, having sex with, you, you murder them at the moment of orgasm and you get the most powerful of the jinn. OK, mm. Mm. and the most powerful of the jinn happen to like the murder of children during sodomy. Mm. OK, after they've been tortured. OK, and we're allowing our leaders to do this because that's the cult that they belong to. Mm. All right. So I'm I'm describing the polar opposites here. You see. So if you want to have so that kind of explains why the prophet said, uh, you know, seek refuge in Allah before you have intimacy with your wife. Yes. Because yes. if you're if you, it's a time to be, it's 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 a time where you're open to things, whether positive yes. or negative. Yes. And, yes. If you're not if you're not in the right state of grace then you you are inviting the jinn there for, you know to to enter your relationship and you know the jinn are just going to destroy you okay so it's better it's better to be consciously aware of what it is that you're doing mm -hmm. and you see everything everything that has to do with the deen with akhlaq with our uh, a proper approach, a diplomatic approach to each other in marriage has to do with this moment. Mm. This moment doesn't come without it. Right. This moment does not arrive without it. Okay. Mm. Now, the man will certainly have his orgasm, but not the woman. Mm. Not if she's being mistreated. It doesn't yeah. happen for her. Yeah. Because a woman, her, her response is a response to intimacy, not just to the physical realm. And intimacy for the woman has everything to do with what we discussed yesterday. Those moments of conversation, those moments of her being acknowledged as important to the, mm. to the man. Not just as a sexual object, but as a companion and as someone who's helping him along their common path, you see. So if the man is just using his wife as a sexual object and as a slave, this moment of fana never comes. It doesn't mm. arrive. It doesn't happen. And uh, this sort of, they're, they're, they're just playing a game. You're pretending to be guided. <laughs> it doesn't happen. 
Mm. You see, this happened with the Prophet and with Fatima for sure. I don't know about the other women. I haven't examined them. But this relationship with the Prophet, in light of what I know about the previous Prophets and their wives, this happened with them. And this is what allowed the Kingdom of Allah to be fulfilled and to be brought into a position in answer to Ibrahim's, the promise that God made to Ibrahim. Okay? Mm -hmm. This was fulfilled, and it all has to do with marriage. All mm -hmm. of it. All of it. It all has to do with the angelic uh, uh, ministry. The angels, are, the angels are not above us. They're below us. Okay? They're just in another realm. They, they, the angels were, were commanded to obey us. They were commanded to uh, not obey us, but they were commanded to give reverence to us. Okay. Mm. They were commanded to bow to us as Kilata. Okay. Yes. yes. So let's get rid of that whole idea that, you know, we need to serve the angels. No, the angels are serving us. Mm. Like Allah's command, by Allah's directive, okay? Right. And right. we are the boss, okay? But we cannot be the boss, we cannot be the caliph unless we get this thing right in the marriage. This thing mm. in the marriage bed has to be correct. Mm. If it's all better off, it doesn't matter how many prayers, doesn't matter how beautiful your, your masjid is, it's all going to collapse in your face. Mm. This marriage bed has to be, because this is the point of unity. This is the point where peace is maintained. Peace is, if you don't have it at home, you can't enforce it in the street mm. because you don't have the correct authority. Mm. If you try to enforce peace in the street without peace at home, you're working in the system of al -Dajjal, and that's what's happening now with the Muslim police forces. <laughs> that's what's happening with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, have I made this archetype <laughs> big enough yes. for you now? <laughs> very, very, very clear. This was a very important discussion and a very much needed discussion. I hope, um, inshallah, all of you guys that will be listening to this uh, will really share this, you know, with, with and don't be shy. Right. The prophet said there's no shyness in the deen. And it's actually great. All you have to do is send them the video. You know, you don't have to like yes. say anything. You just send them the video. And uh, and and I think this conversation and other conversations that are coming forth on this subject, because this is a big subject, um, are extremely yes, important for this Ummah to wake up. And uh, I hope yes. uh, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses you and me to wake up this Ummah so we have some make the Prophet and Allah happy in the Day of Judgment. That would be great. Alhamdulillah. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Yes, yes. May so, it be so. Ameen. And then... Uh, okay, so we'll talk with... We'll talk, okay. Yes, yes right? inshallah. We'll end here today, and we yeah, will continue the next good. time um, Allah allows us to be together, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as-salam.